Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. So before I start the video, I just wanted to apologize about my voice. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that it's different or not, but I currently have a throat infection. Um, so it's causing kind of like a raspier, like deeper voice for me. Um, but regardless, it's not going to stop me from making videos for you guys, but I just wanted you to keep that in mind, so I do apologize. <laughs> so today is another Crested Gecko setup. It's Crested Gecko setup for 2022, but this is a very special one to me because it's the first time I've actually done a custom background. So I've been working on a custom background for a little over a week now. Um, and I think it turned out really well. I didn't record my actually making the background because I actually had no idea if it was going to go right or not. Um, you know, I haven't really done anything like this. I know Tom's done some custom backgrounds, but it's not even the same kind of style um, and technique that was used in this one because it was desert versus jungle. So it was a different process, but I think it turned out really well. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. Um, so in the future, I will record my actual step by step on how I made it now that I actually know how to do it, which is great. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do a setup for it today. We're actually going to put in the actual pieces and stuff like that. So uh, my plants have not arrived yet. So that's going to be um, I'm going to do that in the like next part of this video for you guys. It won't even matter. It will be in the same video. But for me, I'll probably be waiting like a day or two and then I'll continue recording the video that I'm making now. So once again, I will list all the supplies down below uh, of everything I use. It's just your basic stuff that we are using in all of our other tanks, which we normally do anyways. Um, there's a few other bits I need to do to the background first, um, but I'm going to show you it and then tell you guys what I'm going to do. And then we're going to start setting it up. Um, so hopefully you guys bear with me with my voice. Uh, I do apologize once again. It's annoying me more than anyone I, I, I feel. Um, just because I can tell that it's different and uh, yeah, it's just annoying me. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the tank and what we uh, plan to do slash kind of what my idea is and then we'll get in and just start setting it up. And this is it guys. This is my custom made background. Um, I think it turned out really well. I just recently added the moss. Uh, I've still got to clean up the bottom, um, but I think it looks really cool. So of course these will house plants uh, in both the pots. And then, uh, yeah, I, th I think it turned out really nice. And I think once it's actually finished and a full tank, I think it's going to look amazing. So the things that I still need to do to this is um, I'm going to cover up this. Uh, I've got some like backing to uh, cover up the actual whiteness and, and kind of all this section. Uh, this little hole here, by the way, is for the heat mat. So that's going to that's going to be the heat spot. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to cover it up on both sides because, of course, this is not the most attractive thing to look at. Uh, I've got like a nice like slick black to cover it with. It's like a stick-on adhesive, uh, which I think is going to make it look really nice. But yeah, this is what it looks like, guys. I hope it looks cool to you guys as well. Um, and then uh, then we'll start setting it up. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to do that side adhesive stuff along with putting on the heat mat and then we'll come back and I'll start doing the rest. So, guys, this is how it looks. Um, I'm actually very pleased with how it came out. Um, I think it looks awesome. You got the heat mat on this side um, with the hole cut out and then I'll show you the back. It's just all black on the back now. Um, I think it makes it look so much nicer. Uh, you don't see all of the foam and it's really coming together this tank now. So this is what the heat mat is now. So he's got the strip there, he or she, whichever one I put in there, has got the strip there now. Um, but no, I think it looks awesome. So what I'm going to do now is hoover it out and then we can start filling it with um, our actual bottom layer. All right. Hey, what is up, guys? I thought I would do a voiceover for this part of the video because uh, when actually editing it, my voice is a lot better, as you can probably tell. Um, so starting off, I go ahead and put in uh, two nine litre bags of uh, Swell Reptile. It's a shop here in the UK. It's an online shop where you can buy reptile things. This is their own brand of Hydro Balls. I actually found these to be the best Hydro Balls I've actually used so far, which is actually crazy, uh, even in comparison to some of the bigger named ones. They are huge, which they look really nice. They actually look like Maltesers, which is quite funny. Um, but they are, they were actually also super clean when I got them. There was barely any dust I needed to rinse off. And of course, them being so large, they make up more of a gap uh, and you can fill more in for kind of less and they won't actually do expensive either next up i'm going to go ahead and put in a uh, drainage mesh um, now i don't know if you guys know what this does so basically it stops all the substrate from going into your drainage layer 
um, and sitting with all the water as well and then causing some kind of like fungus or bacteria growth as well. Uh, of course this is the ExoTerra one, I always buy this one just because it fits the tank exactly how you need it. Um, so I'm just going ahead and patting it down just to make sure that none of it's going to get caught and some of the substrate will get through. Next up we go ahead and put in the substrate, now of course we're using the Arcadia Earth Mix. Uh, this is the one I use for all of my bioactive setups because it is great. I, I personally, I think it's amazing. Has so many different like minerals and nutrition in the actual soil itself, um, along with uh, some other things. Uh, Pip decided to make a little appearance uh, whilst making this video. Um, but I've actually had uh, and seen earthworms being developed in this substrate. I go ahead and also add in some leftover cocoa fiber, which is what I use for the background. Um, which, uh, of course, if I do make a video and you guys want me to show you how I made the background, then we will uh, go through all of that in another process. But I go ahead and do two bags of the uh, substrate along with the cocoa mix as well, because I felt like it. I wanted to fill up just the black bar on the actual ExoTerra tank. Um, just because I thought it looked nice and of course it gives plenty of room for the plants to grow their roots as well Now yeah, like I was saying I've also had like earthworms develop inside this earth mix as well uh, So I'm not even sure how that kind of happens, but it's got some great minerals in it And uh, it's definitely one I like it's super fluffy and light as well So I'm just going ahead and patting it down because I want to compact it as much as I can and next up We're gonna go put in our cleanup crew. I got the biggest cleanup crew I've ever had for any tank uh, I think it was four tubs of springtails, I believe, and then three tubs of one ice pod and three tubs of another ice pod. So, of course, I'm going ahead and evenly distributing the springtails across the tank because um, I read that online uh, and also me and Tom were talking about it. Apparently, you do need quite a lot of springtails for actually a colony to actually properly get started. So, I went with four tubs. Um, I'm hoping that this is enough and that they're doing all right uh, as it's been probably about a week since I actually made this video and now I'm actually editing it. So I'm going to go ahead and also I'm just dumping them all in. The two types of ice pods that I'm going to be using in this one is the uh, tropical grey and the giant orange. Now I was also going to get, um, they had a new dwarf white one which I was going to put in there but they were out of stock sadly so I wasn't able to get it um, as I got most of my items from Swell itself. So I think I've got two more tubs of isopods to go ahead and dump in. Oh, no, yeah, here we go, we got the isopods. <laughs> Watching back the video, I'm just making, remembering all the things because it has been about a week. So yeah, I had the tropical greys and the giant oranges. Um, you'll see a big difference on why they're called the giant oranges as uh, they're more of like a feeder one that I put in there as it's uh, something a little extra for the gecko to chase Whereas the tropical grey ones are the ones that are mainly going to be my cleanup crew because they're small enough to kind of escape You can kind of see them all starting to spread around out there um, And uh, hopefully it creates a nice little colony as most of my other tanks I can still see them um, Roaming around in them and that's been well over a year now for some of my tanks in there So um, hopefully these ones do all right as well so we're going to go ahead and just dump in some of the actual large ones now. These are the giant orange ones. Uh, I hope the camera did pick it up on how large these are in comparison. Um, as most of them come out and they seem like they're dead because they're a little stunned. But they slowly start to move around. So going ahead and letting them all kind of uh, just, I was just checking, make sure that the ones weren't dead. There's the giant orange one you can see there. Um, it's so look at that, look how much bigger they are compared to the little little gray ones. So yeah, definitely, I, I'm pretty sure they've probably eaten most of the ones in there. Maybe hopefully some of them have escaped, but this is what they look like. And uh, they're going ahead and just gonna hopefully start a colony. I be keep checking up on it, and I do see occasionally a couple. Um, I'm just more hoping my springtails are doing well. That's that's the main thing for me because uh, I can always add more ice pods easily, but adding springtails, it's hard to ch check up on them, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. Um, but you can kind of see them in the substrate. So I'm just going ahead and spreading them out, uh, allowing them to explore and hopefully start digging into the substrate to escape the fear of the gecko. <laughs> All right, so now that all of the um, actual isopods and springtails are inside, it's going to go ahead and move on to the next part, which is adding the plants. So I got a cool variety of plants. Now this I didn't get from Swell themselves because they don't really sell live plants. I got this one from a bioactive shop online. Um, I will link it down below uh, so you guys can go and check out. They, I thought uh, before I got them from Global Geckos, I wanted to try somewhere new. 
um, and see how these ones were. So I went ahead and got a fern. These ones I actually selected individually, whereas before I bought a bundle. So I got a nice fern and then of course I got this one. I, I'm sure you guys have seen this before. I've used it in a few of my other tanks. Um, I have it in the one to the right as well with pit bin. But I thought I get some tall ones, I'll get some short ones, and of course I need some that are actually going to go into the tubs up top as well. Um, so I probably spent like a few hours looking through all the plants online to see which ones I actually wanted. Um, and you'll see in a second uh, my favourite plant that I picked out out of all of them. Um, just because I like I like to make variety, I think it looks a lot nicer having a mixture of ground plants and growing plants along with the ones that I'm going to be putting up in the air. Now this one, this one here is called a Petra. It is a plant that I've been looking at for a little while and I think it looks awesome because uh, it definitely pops with a bit more colour uh, with that reddish and that's oranges and green as well. Um, very cool. So I'm just basically, right now, I'm just planning in my head where I'm going to put these plants as um, the actual cool part about the website that I got these from, um, it actually shows you a kind of graph of where you need to put them, you know, depending on how much light they need, if they need to be in the shade, how much watering, how much direct watering, um, which is very cool and very helpful as well. So right now I'm literally just staring at the tank thinking, hmm, is this, is this where I want it? Is this how I want the plant? Um, and by the end of the video, I've probably changed the layout of probably about two to three times uh, until I actually got the final one that I was happy with. So once ahead, once again, before I even put in the next plant, I come back and I'm changing my mind around again. This is the second change. Uh, I thought maybe the one at the back would be a bit bigger, cover, cover some of the back a bit more. Um, but I actually, I actually don't think I even go up with this one. I think I change it once again. Um, so I'm just going ahead and moving around the plants, uh, as this is probably the most creative process for me. I like to just kind of like have a have a play around with the plants and see what looks good, what's not looking good, and then I take a step back, look at the tank, and think, you know, does this look nice? Does it not look nice? Um, and see and see what I think. So next up is one of the top plants. Uh, I didn't really show it to the camera, which is a little annoying, but you'll see it in the final one. Uh, it's a nice flowery one. Uh, it's got a nice center flower. I do apologize. I, I, I don't know all the names of the plants that I uh, that I picked up. Um, it was more I was looking at what they were good for and, and uh, how they look, to be honest. That's probably the biggest thing about what I think is, uh, of course, how they look. So I'm just dragging some soil from the bottom to plant up and kind of hold the plant in place and give it enough substrate uh, for it to actually be suspended in the air. So don't forget if you guys are enjoying this kind of video, uh, leave a like and comment down below uh, if you enjoy it because I'm happy to make more voiceover ones or if you guys want the ones where I actually talk as I'm doing it, I can do that as well. Uh, it's completely up to you guys. So leave a comment, say which kind of one you like. Um, I mainly just did it this way uh, because of my voice and my throat was killing me at the time so I just didn't really want to talk much but um, I mean I don't mind doing it this way so you guys just leave a comment which one you like and uh, for future videos or future setups I'll do it that way. Next up is of course the Apothos. The Apothos is one that has probably made I think an appearance in most of my tanks um, because of how well they do. It's such a hardy plant. Uh, it survives in pretty much any condition. As long as you're watering it, it will grow and it spreads like wildfire. This is the fastest growing plant I have um, and it, it spreads out quite quickly and before you know it, you're having to prune it. And uh, I like that because it, it just kind of gives it that more extra variety uh, and extra uniqueness because of course they're gonna grow in whichever direction they want to. So that was why I put it at the top so it could kind of grow downwards um, and uh, I thought that would look nice, as you can probably tell in the, in the reflection, I'm checking it out, how, how I think it looks. Um, and uh, I, I know that I do, I do change it one more time before this. So next up is I'm adding in a layer of sheet moss. I pretty much wanted to cover the whole floor in sheet moss, um, as uh, so before I kind of partially covered it. Um, put it around like the plants that were in the ground but this time I literally bought two whole bags of it and I wanted to as you can see just completely put it over the top because I thought it would give a nice protective layer of the spring towels as well um, and kind of give them more hiding spots as opposed to just being out in the open on the dirt so I'm just literally I put the whole sheet down kind of uh, tuck it around the plants you can kind of tear it with your hands which is good because uh, it means that you can get chunks off uh, that you need kind of size wise to fit but I just put one side down one side and then the other one down the other and that was 
uh, hope that well hopefully that's covered enough it completely covered it basically I think there's a couple gaps at the front right and then at the back right as well uh, but I basically just covered it completely with moss and here comes the second bag of moss um, the sheet moss I think is, is really good the cushion moss was the other option but the cushion moss comes in such a small quantity whereas the sheet is quite large as you can see two bags pretty much covered the whole flooring of a 60 45 60 which is pretty good now of course this moss is just going to hold in all that moisture especially when spraying um, hopefully it, all the water is leaking down through into the soil as well for the roots of the plant but it keeps that moss nice and nice and fresh and also holds in humidity for the tank as well so uh, I actually the camera died on the next part I just wanted to let you guys know but it, it, I started recording again once putting in the gecko the only difference is I added in the uh, front you'll see in a second uh, climbing rope the black one the twisted one and then I added in an extra piece of cork bark on top those are the only two bits that were missed out in the video but here is Eclipse this is my female crested gecko uh, she's a Halloween special morph I got from Doncaster reptile show which is pretty cool and now I'm gonna show you guys the final result this is what it looks like at night um, and hopefully I can find Eclipse in this one I think she's yeah she's hiding out the back right but she's been loving it so this is a week later of the actual uh, tank itself so it kind of shows you it's still holding up nicely still still looking great I think personally uh, and so far I believe this is the best tank I've done so here is Eclipse who is apparently wanting to be camera shy not really wanting to be seen but the plants are doing well and the wall is holding up that's that was probably the, the biggest thing for me was that the um, actual back wall and thing held up nicely uh, I think I try and get a shot yeah I try and get a shot of Eclipse at the back here but she was having none of it and then she bolted she was gone <laughs> she didn't want to be in the camera but I caught her a little little shy hiding underneath the cork bark um, as I think she's such a beautiful morph and you can probably catch Hugo in the left hand tank there checking her out hopefully wanting to breed them soon but I hope you guys have enjoyed this tank setup. Now I do apologize for the missing footage of uh, some of the last little pieces I added. And of course I didn't record how I actually made it, but I um, did throw up some pictures in the last video if you go check them out of the uh, kind of step by step. I'll throw them up now as well, just for you guys to see. Because uh, I took pictures of my progress, but I didn't record it just in case it went wrong. Um, and I, I didn't know how to how to resolve it, but it went well. So I was really happy with my first ever custom tank. I think it turned out really well, um, and I'm just happy it worked because um, it could have failed horribly. Uh, but I'd like to give some thanks to these two on the screen. These were these two guys I watched so many times. I think I watched their videos on repeat, especially Surfer Designs. I watched his video over and over and over again, studying every part that he was doing in different videos. Uh, to learn how to do it and uh, I do appreciate it so I'd, I'd like to give a big thanks to him uh, for showing me how to do that but I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, and I hope you guys are looking forward to more content like this in the future um, but let me know if you want me to do voiceovers or live because that's probably the one I'm a bit up in the air about I'm happy to do either but it's completely up to you guys so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to hit that like button and well you can see a quick blooper all right, so guys, this is um, how it looks. <coughs> All right, guys, so this is how it looks. Um, I actually, <coughs> I actually just can't talk. All right, there's the blue. We're done. Have a good one. Bye, guys.